Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. But I'm here to tell you, 39 years later, praise God. God, praise God, saved and sanctified and filled him with the Holy Ghost, called him to preach the word of God. And tonight he stands before you. I produced this, I introduced to some, praise God, hallelujah. And to others, praise God, none other than Pastor Rob Best from Life Changing Worship Center. Hear ye him, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, come on, praise the Lord. The Lord is worthy to be praised. Let's grab somebody by the hand real quick. By the hand real fast. I need a voice, so you're going to have to pray for me. Look at your neighbor, squeeze their hand real gently, and say, hey, neighbor. Hey, neighbor. Everything, everything that battled you. This week, oh, this week is in some serious trouble. Some serious trouble. I speak over your life. Is in some serious trouble. I'm telling you, it's in some serious trouble. There is victory. I said there's victory. There's victory. There's victory. In the name of Jesus, we thank the Lord. We thank God for being here on tonight. Thank God for the shepherd of this house. Thank God for Pastor Carson Crystal. Come on, you can do that. I'll give you a voice a minute. Thank God for Lady Crystal on tonight. Thank God for all of you in my life and her absence. She made three things soon. My son, uh, she's upset with me because I signed my son up for football. And she said, now, if you sign them up, then you will be the one running. I said, sure. And, of course, my schedule has me here and her on the field. So she didn't like that. <laughs> she, she didn't like that. But uh, prayerfully, she'll have that little buggy in the wind. It's so good to be here. I don't have a voice. The only reason, and it'll come back. The one thing I found is when I'm in the will of the Lord and I'm in the right place to draw strength from where it is, I'm in assignment. And uh, I went crazy. I've been gone for two weeks and I came back and hadn't preached in my church in two weeks. And I think I modulated too many times, yelled too many times. Uh, the church is on their knees. That's why I tell you, rest your ankles a lot because y'all push people to preach hard. But I thank God for being here. I don't feel like I'm amongst strangers. I feel that I'm right at home. It's good to see all of you. Uh, clergy, evangelists, traveling elders. It's good to see my good friend from New Life, uh, Minister Blunt. Good to see you, sir. Thank God for all of you. I'm going quickly into the Bible. Uh, First Kings, we're going to the book of First Kings. I wanted to preach to you on tonight. I really wanted to come in and just take you to the next dimension. And I was going to preach that they left me for dead, but they forgot to check my pulse. And I wanted to preach that and push you in a place where you leave here shouting and, and tearing some stuff up. But tell your neighbor, I survived. I survived. I survived. I survived. Survive, survive every attack that the devil has thrown at me. I'll survive. I'm still standing. Don't tell somebody I'm yet standing. I made it here on broken pieces, but I'm yet standing. I wish I had somebody. What type of hope? The attack didn't work. The devil fought for bad. God turned for my good. God is a good God in a bad situation. I say he won't fail you. I like it. The Lord told me. I was sitting in the seat, I was trying to pull it together. I do not text in the pulpit. I Google. And I was pulling my scriptures together and I was pulling, and the Lord said, no, go back to where I sent you. Uh, we're gonna go to 1 King 19. And uh, rather you know it or not, the church is under attack. It's under attack, the church is under attack. And it's good to be in a thriving church. A healthy, healthy, spiritually healthy. It's a spiritually healthy. It's a church you actually feel the anointed. Uh, a church that you actually, you can feel that there is no nonsense when you walk through the door. And you may have some crazy ones that may cut up every now and then, but you know that the atmosphere demands discipline. 
I don't have nobody real early. You know that there's enough people in here that can put the devil on the run and a demon if you have to. I wish I had five people in here that realize that being a good church is a good thing. Because if my church is good, my house is good. If my house is good, my family's coming. And as long as I got King Jesus, that's enough. So it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Tell somebody, we in kingdom, where you at? They're not with me now. Tell them, we in the kingdom, that's where we at right now. And there will be a kingdom transfer in this house tonight. If the windows of heaven open up tonight, what would you do? What would you get? What would you tap into? I told you, my voice will come back. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. First King 19. Uh, see, it came right back. First King 19, and I want to read to you for the first verse. And I, Mama, uh, uh, Lady Beth said something to me today. Lady Beth said, How your voice gonna heal if all you do is talk? <laughs> so, I thank God for my mother on tonight, Elder Beth. She just jumped up. Praise the worship leader at the minister on tonight. The rest of them, they're unaccountable. I don't know where they are. <laughs> I stop apologizing for church folk because you want to have to realize something, and this is what I'm trying to prep the church for. We are in the last day. And honestly speaking, you won't have to work on your own soul salvation now. This thing right here is so important that you could leave here today. And then at the end of the day, neither one of us leaders could speak on your behalf. I told them, I think they got this thing mixed up. I think when they go and they say only God can judge me, you don't want God to judge you. Because if God judge you, that's it. Case closed. I, I think they got God's judging system mixed up. I think they feel that when they go to heaven, they're going to go and put on their best clothes and hide their filthy sin. Y'all don't want me to preach. I think that they think they're going to hire the best lawyer they can find and represent themselves. They don't realize that the greatest lawyer died for them. His blood the advocate, I knew somebody stood already for them. They don't realize that once they get to heaven, that's it. It's either depart from me or enter in. Look at somebody, tell them, choose you this day who you are. I feel, I feel only God can judge me. You better hope your brother and sister judge some of this stuff we in. Tell somebody right there, I want you to be concerned about me. Tell me the truth. Y'all ain't with me in here. If I ain't right, tell me I ain't right. If I ain't, y'all don't want to talk now. If my spirit is off, let me know my spirit is off. Get away from these folk telling you what you want to hear. And get up under somebody that'll tell you you're on your way to hell. Lord, I'm in trouble. I'm first King 19. One, it's a spirit that's chasing the church people. And its job is not even to actually weaken you. It is actually to wear down leadership so that if it can strike leadership, it knows that some of us who have been in church for 10 years, five years, three years, won't have enough stability to stand because we don't even know the Bible this season. I wish I had somebody to preach to. You gotta know more word than just one scripture this season. I heard Jesus say, it is written. Look at your neighbor say, dancing is good, but dancing ain't gonna get this devil up off of you. You got to know some word. You better have something deep down in your belly when the devil show up. You better have an anointing over your life. And I'm not just talking about no foolishness. And we, I have decided to run the devil out of my church. That's why I'm slim tonight. I think I made my church made. It'll be all right. First Kings 19 and 1. Let me tell you something. If you're going to get anywhere this season, put the devil out of your inner circle. I say, if you're going to get anywhere, now you know what, what make people upset? Because sometimes the devil is family members. I should have said that on the mic. Sometimes the devil is the one they love the most. Sometimes the devil is the one that said, marry me. Did he just say that from the pulpit? Sometimes the devil is the thing that you fell in love with and did not see God for first. You ought to look at your neighbor and tell him, don't you marry the devil. Don't you want to hear with the 
ourselves together. We're going to mess around and be laying in front of the church. God, that's the wrong message, ain't it? We got to let this foolishness go. And half of what we're tied to is based upon illegal relationships with people that don't matter. People who aren't going anywhere. Miserable people love miserable people. Lonely people love lonely people. Broke people love broke people. I wish I had a church to preach to. I wish we would just come together. Somebody gave me the scenario, and I'm going to preach this word. They said they don't know how great we are when we come together with one accord. <laughs> they think they can do it by themselves, but he said, could you tell them tonight to study the snowflake? He said, one snowflake by itself can't do a thing. But when the heavens open up and snowflake to snowflake come together, here it comes. He said, schools close. The government shut down. He said, the roads shut down. Everything got to shut down. When we come together, we can cause a storm to happen. He's trying to make you think that you can do it all by yourself. That you don't need nobody. Except for the people that don't matter. I've been prophesying till I've been losing my voice. And it's sad. I've been telling the people about the little orange cards, independence cards. I told them it was going to shut down. They don't believe it. I told them two years, buy some canned goods. They ain't listening. They're busy buying crabs. <laughs> <laughs> Go check that cupboard. Ain't nothing in there. Crab shells in the garage. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble. We are God's people. And we are not using our focus. All right. In this scripture, and if I could read this to you, God said we got to come together and begin to protect leadership. All right. All right. Now, this is hard because a lot of people have this misconstrued. They think protecting leadership has to do with carrying their bags or, or, or standing before uh, certain places. They, I, 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 you know, please help me. This man right here showed me something that blew my mind. Army man right here. Uh, uh, I asked him a question because I never asked him to stand up when I preach. He just started standing up for no good reason. I'm, you know, all these uh, honor brothers I've had. I said, why are you standing up here? He, he showed me something last week. Could, could I have four of you real quick? Or real, real fast, four men if you could. Just four men. Now, I'm going to show you the representation. I don't know why I'm going. Yes, I do the Holy Ghost. Uh, the representation. Uh, could you come here for one second? Uh, sir, could you stand dead in the middle? Now, this is something that blew my mind. Set them up how you show me they need to be set up. I said, he said, if you are a chaplain in the army, he said, what would have to happen? Move to me. Come to me. See, he said, I was illegal for that. I said, what you mean I'm illegal? I can go where I want to go. What if God? He said, no, 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 no. He said, our job, here it comes, as armor bearers, is actually to cover you. So he he said, somebody has to be in front. He said, somebody has to be at your side. Somebody has to be at your back. I said, but wait a minute. I said, what if I need to go that way? So I tried to step out. Come out for a second. He said, no, 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 no. He said, the first thing you have to do is communicate with us. We are here at your beck and call. Preacher, so you let us know what it is you're trying to accomplish. Oh, she know my voice. And a stranger, they will not stop So I said, okay, I want to go left. He said, left, so they moved. But I said, what happens? When he got to work. Jesus. Yes, sir. I said, what do we do now? He said, well, we have to compensate yeah, right. for what's missing. That's right. But the bad part about compensation if you leave this circle, any way you look at it, there is a gap to leadership. So he said, wait, hold on, because everybody's chasing these positions to get close to the leaders, and I'm so sick of it. God sent me here. The Lord 
told me, well, God ain't told me, sit down. Somebody told me something today that blew my mind. They said, if a pastor comes in my church under me, they're no longer a pastor, they're an elder. Oh, boy, why'd you just say that? He said, because you got to watch people that try to split your church while they're in your church. He said, best, I come to speak into your life and kill the spirit of division because nothing can fall unless it's divided from the inside. He said, wait a minute. I said, so what happens now? So you're fighting. Here come the devil. Come at him. You ain't feel like coming to church today. Go, go, you can go sit down. You know how church folk is? I got work, they ain't got work. Now he's wide open. Leadership wide open. This is not just walking into a building because most pastors don't want to be surrounded like this. You know what this represents? Your prayer. Yes. 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 Yes, sir. yes. But the more you take off having to deal with your own personal issues, you don't understand that it flows from the head. Yes, sir. And then it trickles down. Yes, you think that I can jump into position. Mm. And out of position. But God said what they don't understand is the moment they step out, I have someone that they think is unqualified. Already trained. See, the Holy Ghost is a good trainer. That will jump into place. But he said that we've got to begin to operate in order. You can rest your ankle. You cannot want to be in the front. And can I say something? Say it. Most of us are attention junkies. There ain't nothing wrong with you. You just want attention. Oh, God. Lord, I'm giving you a trouble. What's wrong with you today? Well, I know I said. I'm telling you my back hurt. What's wrong with you tomorrow? I'm going to tell you before tomorrow, my knee hurt. What's wrong with you next week? They're going to take my house. What's wrong with you in two weeks? They're going to take my car. I thought God was enough. You got to get to a place that when you get with needy people, you got to tell them God will take care, but you're not going to be around my spiritual heart. Ask yourself, and this is where I'm at. Identify yourself now. Amen. Why are you in my life? Mm -hmm. Come on, <laughs> Okay, God sent you, but what did he send you for? Come on. That's right. Come on. And if you have to ask me what it is you're to do, and you say God sent you, then evidently, come on, somebody missed God. We would play our role. God told Mighty right there. If you would just be happy with being the usher, if you'd be happy with being the singer, if you'd be happy with playing the background, if you'd be happy with just sitting in the back and praying for the front, if you'd be happy without a title, I said, if you'd be happy without a title, if you'd be happy that you got breath in your body, if you'd just be happy that he saved your life. We fight each other. And the devil's sneaking in our house. We fight on each other. And the devil taking over our home. We got unanointed people speaking over our life. And many anointed people that have real words for you. It's what you have saying from until your back is up against the wall. But in this season, when you have identified people that are time wasters, level leeches, y'all don't want me to preach right now. Folk that suck from you when you have saved them. There was five wise and there was five foolish. You got to discern who the five wise is. And the foolish ones gonna have to get their own oil this season. You turn them on sight. So I now have discerned that there is greater 
to me than what's around me. But there are decisions that has to be made. Ministry that has to go forth. Territory that has to be acquired. And the devil has inserted the spirit of quitting and it's spreading like an epidemic. But I'm putting this church on quarantine. The only way we're going to find out where that spirit came from, what the government do, as soon as they find out that there's something that they can't figure out but it's deadly to everybody else, they put it on quarantine, preach up in here. They lock it down. They be like, nobody in, nobody out. You say, but I ain't sick. They say, but he is. Preach up. Guilty by association. Look at your neighbor and say, oh, I'm fasting too long. Oh, I am giving too long. I will not be guilty by association. You can go to the club, but I'm going to the rock. You can go and drink, but I'm going to drink from a fountain that never runs dry. You can cuss, but I'm going to speak in tongues. But I will not be quarantined for your foolishness. Man, I feel like preaching. You got Spiritually sickly people that like being sick. All right. Oh, you ever notice she had a greater service and you look around as a leader and be like, I got wish so and so was here. Thank you, this word right here. Have you ever done that? You think to yourself, I ain't, I ain't gonna look, but you look at the scene and be like, really? <laughs> You get home. Where were you? It, it, it was a bad day. <laughs> How was church? Amazing. You should have given my, me my situation. <laughs> there are some people yeah. that are anointed to aggravate you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They were not anointed by God. They were anointed by the devil himself because he knew that your calls to be a part of this ministry was so great and it did not have to be from the front of the church. But even in intercession prayer, we got to go back to prayer. I feel like preaching. You ought to start having prayer revivals. See how many people show up. Uh oh You ought to start just praying and see if you can get the whole church to buy your mouth. Oh, you ought to talk that now. We pray more than an hour. We're going to shut in tonight. I got a question. In the past, to say it's a shut-in tonight. How many would stay? Or how many would make excuses? I feel like talking. Because if I shut myself in, that must mean something's in danger out there. And we got to begin to pull together. I read in my Bible that Peter was in prison. But they came together and prayed. And they prayed until Peter came and knocked on the door. These kind don't come through fasting and praying. They say, who is it? It's me. Tell somebody, pray real fast. <laughs> hurry up, hurry up. Because by the time you get there, it's going to be, it's me knocking on your door. When we come together, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the devil keeps us at odds. Yes, sir. Apart. That's right. And you know, I learned something. I tell people this story all the time. When I started preaching, I'm eight, well, I've been preaching for about 13 years, but pastor and eight. I sat down at your table with some preachers. It was about my first year. They said, Best, how you doing, church? Oh, man. Oh, flow, two services. Oh, man, we have a church. It was Elder Craig Mathias and your pastor. We were at a banquet. And they looked at each other like this.
what you tell the game. Can I tell y'all something, a little secret? Go ahead. Anything that grow too fast, uh -huh. anything that grow too fast is injured. Anything, I mean anything in your life, if it grows way too fast, that means there has been an injury that has occurred. Uh, what do you mean? What you mean, boy? What I'm trying to tell you is I come off of this stage and twist my ankle and immediately my ankle will swell. You didn't catch it right there. Immediately it will enlarge itself. But here it comes. But if I apply either heat, oh man, right there, or put cold places to it, then it goes back to its original form. Oh, the heat is when you needed them, but they didn't show up. Preach now. The cold times is when you didn't have enough, but they act like they did not know. God was trying to show you that though you were surrounded by many, you were actually in an injured state. But God said anything that grows this season is going to grow slowly, and I'm going to get the glory from it. People to trust God this season. All right, man. Well, I'm here. Come on, man. The spirit of quitting. Mothers, we don't have to worry about y'all quitting. Lock down to the end. That's right. That's right. Spiritual daddies, we don't have to worry about y'all quitting. No, sir. Lock down to the end. It's the generation after you. Yes. <laughs> it is the generation that is after you that feel that I know everything. Say it, sir. You can't tell me anything. I told them, how come I'm an accurate prophet when I say your job is going to give you a promotion and you get it the next week? But when I say that's not the man for you, I'm a false prophet. So how come I'm an accurate prophet when I tell you that increase is on the way and I tell you where the car is at but when I tell you that that's not the position for you then I missed it. Y'all don't want to talk. How can you love me today and hate me tomorrow? Y'all don't want to preach it. How in the world have we been birthed in a good place but mess around and lose the oil that's on the inside of us. Look at somebody and say you need a brain transplant because if you ain't caught it by now then you never gonna get it. Let this mind be in you. That is also like Christ Jesus. You need a brain operation. I told him what I'm getting ready to do. I'm coming into church and I'm passing out helmets. And it ain't for football. Yes, sir. There are some convenient spiritual retired people in God's house. Don't want to know. Uh -huh. Retardation is actually the lack of money. Uh -huh. So they're stuck. We just saw six retarded people that hung with you. You did. I know you did. I know you did. You just said, oh, that was Johnny. That was Jim. That was Joe. Oh, I hope that ain't none of y'all here. You just married. That was Uka. They've been stuck for so long. We talk all night long, wait back up, and talk about the same thing again. I don't know how to come out of this meeting. I don't know how to get over this. See, God, I don't know what to do next. I told you what to do. That are some people that's playing with you. They're wasting your time. People often come to me and say, Prophet, what is God saying about me? I say, nothing. <laughs> you know how many people I've had leave my church? Because they come to me and say, Prophet. But now, I ain't no prophet normally. I don't even go by prophet. I don't want no title. Amen. 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 Good title shit, good oil. But all these gay bishops. <laughs> Lesbian apostles. All these people don't even know the proper authority of the kingdom. Y'all don't even want to talk to me again. I don't even want to wear a collar half the time for half this foolishness that's going on. Now the preachers of hell ain't got all of us looking bad. All of us don't want your body. All of us don't want your money. All of us don't want to take from you. There are some leaders that love God with their heart, mind, and soul.
Hear something for you. Say, hey, neighbor. If you see him to go higher, be mindful of people who promote you to positions you know right good and well you're not qualified for. Nice to meet you. I am Apostle so and so. Where your church at? I don't have a church. <laughs> nice to meet you. Prophet so and so, here's my card. Let me tell you where the problem is there. Prophets aren't sent for it, they're sent. That's right. You gotta know, and there's some people out here that's playing these games. <clears throat> I, have you ever asked yourself when you look at certain people and they're with certain people, you'd be like, why? That's right. Have y'all done that? You know they have cut it out. <laughs> you never done that. Seriously, just like the, the older people say, you was raised better than that. <laughs> they, they say, you look better than that. You look at you. Now spiritually, flip that for a moment. Following leaders, they shouldn't be following. Come on. Yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Brown said, can they see me? <laughs> that ain't the spirit of the Lord. That's witchcraft. You can't see. It's some churches I'll walk in and be like, I ain't supposed to be in here. <laughs> you be there and you walk in and be like, oh, yes, sir. what's that feeling? Yes, yes sir. sir. See, that's when you got a relationship. See, y'all got to stop bouncing from church to church, and then you don't understand what's being preached when it's being so preached simplistically, but your spirit has been mixed up because you have been jumping from place to place, and you have been hanging with mongrel people. The Bible says that when they hung with the mongrel people, then they picked up the nature of the mongrel. You don't need to be. I told my preacher, if I don't preach there, why are you preaching there? All right. All right. Especially when you're hollering about, I really don't want to do this, no way. Where are you going to preach at? So and so, you know they gay. Guilty by association. That's it. Preach. Come on, man. He in trouble now. I, some noses is turned up and everything. We don't get delivered tonight. When you are a part of something so powerful, you, you should ask God, say, God, make me a watchman. Now, everybody can't ask to be no watchman. Nosy busybodies can't be watchmen. No, it has to be someone, a person who watches has wisdom. Amen. Because watch this, just because you see a thing don't mean you say That's a thing. Right. That's right. That's right. There's sometimes God will show you ahead of time. Yes. So you'll know what to look for yeah. when the attack really comes. Yes, sir. There are some people who you what it is is God did show you, you just moved too soon. All right. That's right. <laughs> Someone came to my wife and said, said, I believe that. My counterparts is cheating on me. And she said, well, you know, check, find out. But chill, don't say nothing. Right. You gotta let it work its way out. Right. 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 She right. said, don't do anything until you catch it in action. Right. Right. Not black women with Chinese buns. $200 hair on the head and ain't got no offering. People get in trouble in here. That boy didn't just talk about what the Lord help us. Don't never got no money, but they've got five hundred dollars on. Her three hundred dollars, seventy dollars in their nails. They ain't got red bottoms. That's six hundred dollars. I told my wife I'm gonna spray paint the bottom of your shoes red before I put seven hundred dollars in a pair of shoes. I put seven hundred dollars in a basket for God. I don't got myself. She ain't here. Ain't no matter to me. And y'all got your priorities mixed up. When the kingdom begins to advance, that's when your house advances. At the end of the day, all that good looking got you one comment and a whole bunch of enemies. Sometimes you might want to dress broke so everybody.
anybody will stop asking you for money. That's good right there. Y'all know that's good right there. You know, some people will actually ask for things from you based upon how you look. See, our perception of leadership is we got it like that. We got money. We got favor. Y'all don't even understand what favor is. Favor is we living in places we shouldn't even be in. Favor is we driving stuff. We don't even know how we drive it. Favor is we don't even know how we got our churches. Favor is we don't even know how in the world our kids are where they are. But favor... People without discernment, carnal people, give an opinion. And that's what's happening. Watch this. Opinionated people is using their opinion as prophecy. Yes, sir. This is the season you shut your ears to everything that's carnal. I'm going to bring y'all in because I ain't going to keep you all. Preach. Our spirits are being infected instead of effected. I'm sorry, I gotta say this. I don't know how it is. How long you been saved, sir? How long you been saved, man? Okay. How long you been saved, mother? I like that. Now, now, has it ever baffled you that in all your salvation, there are some things that you have wanted to quit, like First King 19? And I'd be willing to quit some things, but it ain't no way in the world I could quit God. Is that anybody here? Yes, Mr. Blunt, that's where we come from. It's no, no. When we came in the church, we came about the same time. So, so our commitment is not, no, it ain't no quitter in us. We didn't quit in the street. Come on in here. But it's something that if I was dedicated to the street, I was dedicated to Hankins. I was dedicated to Hennessy. Y'all don't want me to preach. I was dedicated to marijuana. I was dedicated to two turntables and a mic. Frankie got me in before I let go. I was dedicated to beds that didn't belong to me. So if I will come to God, I'm talking about God who said that let there be and it was. Who is this man that the winds and the waves obey him? I'm talking about God. Has it ever baffled any of you that this generation can walk away from him? They get mad by it. I'm hurt. You got it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Church up, right? Hey, church up. Sunday, every Bible study, every service, missing vacation sometime because you got to give in to the church. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble. That I have to preach while I'm wounded. Now you look at them from the front and it look like they got it all together. But turn around because they never show you their wounds. They never show you all the daggers that have been stuck in them. And this is why Paul said, remove this thorn. He said, my grace is sufficient. Sometimes you got to serve with daggers. You got to learn how to praise them with knives in your back. You got to learn how to praise him when the assassin is in the room. But you better not let the devil see you sweat and you better not let him see you cry. I'm getting ready to go. 
I'm leaving. But we have to pull together. Near by Sam Ballard. I'm all over that body. Pray for me. Sam Ballard sees Nehemiah fixing the breach. Come on. He pulls people together because he realized if we can get their attention while they're in high places, you didn't catch it. If we can get their attention while in high places, then we can cause the breach to actually continue to flow. There are people pulling together secretly. And this is what the Lord telling me. He said, even in this church, secret meetings. Dinner's after service. Meeting at Denny's. Tell them keep their mouth off of church business. Ain't none of their business about nothing. And anybody you hear talking anything against ministry, oh, here comes some, or your brothers. You better be careful. Who it is? Because, see, we're so opinionated. I told him last night, uh, we was in Milford, and I said, yeah, the First Amendment says you have the right of what? But when God comes, you can shut your mouth. All right. That's right. That's true. You got free speech amongst men. But God said, sanctify the people. He said, I'm about to visit them. Let not one of them talk. They don't want to talk to him. Let not even touch the mountain I'm about to sell. That's when you touch that of my anointing. And you might profit no harm. They don't know how powerful God really is. And they lack fear for God, this generation. God said, it's time. Set a higher standard. He said, pastors will come to you and say, how does that thing work? Well, it's easy. Basically, if they leave the church, they're not invited back. Can't even come visit. I went every time they walk past. Them to look up. Remember that man in Temptations, the movie? Yes, sir. All he had to do was chill. Oh, David Ruffin. Oh, he was killing. Or he still, you know, people are getting rebuked and act like they don't bother him. But it's when they turn their back. You remember the movie Friday? He said he gonna cry when he get in the car. You know what I mean? He gonna cry when he get in the car. I'm telling you, it's some folk that God is about to deal with on the behalf of God's people. When he say, hold your peace, it's because enough is enough. And we've got to get to the place where we pull together. And, and, and I told them, cliques have to be broken up in churches. All right. Cliques are so easy to form. Yes. They are so easy. You don't even understand. That's why every now and then, you should come in and just switch a seat. All right. Sit beside somebody new. If you ain't been delivered and you've been sitting by them for two weeks, move. Sunday. <laughs> Move. Yes, sir. They up here talking and take text in church now. Put yes, 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 a pastor wrong, come take your phone and throw it in the rest of you. <laughs> you know, in court, if you pull your phone out, the sheriff walked to you and said, We uh, got this for you. You said, Y'all ready? 
going on. It's the ice bucket challenge. Right. <laughs> I did some research. <laughs> they said, now have you been paying attention to the kids who've been pouring out yes. on themselves? Yeah. Am I in themselves? Yeah. Yeah. What's this one? Yeah. August going to September. Yeah. October's coming up. Yeah. God, you are good. Y'all ready? Yeah. I looked up ALS challenge because I wanted to see why I just kept saying it. Well, I don't even think if it if it never came to me, it wasn't spiritual. I don't dump in no bucket of ice on my head. Is you stupid? I could get hypothermia. I could go in the shop. But this is how it started. They lick themselves. Kids are lighting themselves on fire. And they be in showers, and they hurry up and put them out. Some of them have died. Right. So I knew that was the money. Oh, I mean, that's, that's the money. But I'm thinking when, AL, when the ALS the ice bucket came, I'm thinking, oh man, at least, well, it's, it's dumb, but at least it's not harmful like fire. But then the Lord takes me last night and said, look it up. And it said, satanic preparation for human sacrifice is to go through fire then through ice water. It is the preparation for Halloween. I went a little deeper and it said if any Christian has partaken in it, they have brought a curse to them. And it said even unknowingly, they should openly repent for what they did. Perish because of lack of knowledge. Then it went deeper. Because it said that the enemy is connected. Let me tell y'all something. The devil is not stupid. No, he's not. I don't know what y'all think the devil got in here. Buddy, the devil took a third of heaven with him. It wasn't because they could fight. It's because he had the power of influence. Who talked you out of this church? Who talked you out of your position? The devil. That's why Jesus looked at Peter and called him Simon Barjona the first time and said the Spirit of God has revealed this and then told him, Satan, get thee behind me. Because God can use you one minute and the devil are getting you the next. So I said, well, Lord, what is ALS? And it's short for Lou Gehrig's disease. I said, well, they're taking a hundred dollars if they don't do it, the and they give into it. Well, the Lord said, as Christians, I kept reading, and it said, if they gave the hundred dollars into it, basically what they did is endorse abortion and didn't even know it. Wow. Because the cure they're looking for, for ALS, comes through the embryos of aborted kids. Wow. <laughs> Get off of Facebook and put your face in a good book. <laughs> and say, tell them. I'm glad you report, but they don't, they don't like me on Facebook no way. They hate me for everything they do. I, I, I don't care. I get on there, I be like, I don't care if I could do a video no. So I, I, I really don't care. You don't scare me. Literally, like, you've got to have some wisdom. That's right. That's right. I said, okay, God, what's going on? He said, well, here's what's happening. If the churches begin to fortify, and he told me, keep my memories out of my ear concerning other ministries. That's right. That's right. He said, because they'll have you at pastor's throats that you actually need, and they'll pull you to churches. I, you know, in all these years, I've, I've always had control over life changing worship center books. And I said, I only want people who are anointed to put together services. Amen. Because unanointed people can bring a witch to the pool. That's right. Amen. 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 Why should you pick a service and you only come to church every That's right. once a month? That's right. Why is the people with the most opinion is the ones that don't even never tithe? Where the money going? Where your money at? You never 
you'll notice if you vote yes. right now and say, let's change the color of the carpet to brown. The ones who don't contribute will be the ones to cause the division. Y'all ain't never, y'all ain't never seen that. That's why I got a new rule now. Before I ask them to vote, I say, everybody who ain't paying, keep your hands to your side. What are you saying here? I'm saying, take out all unlegitimate opinions. That's right. That's right. He took 12 people. And he took this world by force. Every single person that's sitting here has a purpose. You've just got to get the devil out of your mindset. I, I, I don't want to hear this right now that the Lord is calling me to be a millionaire because I'm going to be a blessing to my church. Bless the church now. That's right. I'm just speaking over people's lives. Pray for me another job, and I'm going to bless the church. Pray for them a job, and then turn around and go to the office. Hey, you got some hours for Sunday? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Yeah. I told them I ain't praying for no more cars. I ain't praying for no more help. No more jobs. No more. That's the best. None. Because the more people get elevated, the father they run from God. I ain't praying for husbands because you met them. You just don't like them. Lord, send me a husband. He came to you. You just didn't want him because his belly was too big. You didn't even realize that in a year's time, he was going to get his stuff together. Send me a wife. She looked like a milk jug. You didn't realize that in a year's time, she was going to look like a Coca-Cola bottle. You'll never want what God sends you, but you want what you want. This ain't Burger King. Use your mindset as we stand. Somebody told me today, you preach too long. They said, they said preach short and keep them hungry. I said, I can't do it. It just me and my belly. Jeremiah said it's like fire. <laughs> the spirit of quitting. It is trying to overtake some. Let me say this. Weak people can't hang around weak people. I tell people all the time, all the time. And it's so good to see this man because our philosophies, literally the same, came up in the same ministry. But I only say this because it was because we started at the back of the church.